Welcome to Have History Real Travel. I'm your host, the Wilder Historian, and today I want to take you back to 1865. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln shook the foundation of the United States to its core because the war was just wrapping up. On April 9, 1865, Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia had surrendered at Appomattox, and many more armies would follow in subsequent months. Therefore, the assassination of the opposing side's president made the entire country feel a sense of anxiety. For those who witnessed the assassination, their world would be changed. And that's what I want to bring you today is an account by John E. Bingham, who was a 19-year-old young man in the crowd during the play of Our American Cousin, where Abraham Lincoln was shot. He gives this first-hand account to his uncle a few days after the assassination. Washington, D.C., April 21st, 1865. Dear Uncle, You must excuse my negligence in not writing oftener of late, but the excitement which has prevailed for the last week has totally incapacitated me for any kind of labor. Day after day passed, and every day brought with it good news and a prospect of the speedy termination of the war. Our cup of happiness was filled to the brim, and nothing could exceed the excitement with which the news of the surrender of Lee's army was received. Mr. Lincoln had been pressed on several occasions to make a speech, and finally did, taking for his subject the future prospects of the country, the reconstruction of the Union, etc. I was present and heard it, although it was raining, and now, when I think of it, I can almost see him deliver his address. On last Friday, just one week ago, I was told that Grant and wife would accompany the president to the theater. I must confess that I never yet have seen Grant, and as I was anxious for a glimpse, I accompanied a couple of friends to the theater. Considering the object of our going, we took great pains in trying to get a full view of the box and its contents than in getting a good position for witnessing the performance. At about half past eight, the president entered accompanied by his wife, Miss Harris, and Major Rathbone. We were all very disappointed on not seeing Grant, but we certainly had good cause to be thankful afterwards. The assassination took place, I think, shortly after 10 o'clock. Shortly after the shot was heard, Booth sprang to the stage. As soon as he recovered himself, he drew a large knife and shouted Six Semper Tyrannus, the motto of Virginia. Looking up to a man seated near me, who afterwards proved an acquaintance, he said, I have done it. By that time, he had crossed the stage and, partly turning, he waved his dagger on high and shouted, The South's Avenged. This was the last we saw of him. His face is impressed on my mind so strongly that I think I never will forget it. His eyes gleamed like fire his skin almost white to transparency, and his jet black hair waving in accordance with his motions. But to continue, after hearing the motto, I thought that something serious had happened, and I with the rest rushed to the box. Such a sight as I saw there was enough to touch the heart of a savage. Mr. Lincoln was stretched on the floor with his head pillowed in the lap of Miss Laura Keene. His brains were slowly oozing out into her lap, Miss Lincoln was frantic, screaming, Oh my God, they have killed him, they have killed him. He was taken to a house opposite where everything was done, but to no avail. Our J.E. Bingham. 